What do you not like the chair, Stephen? I hate this chair. Why do you hate that chair? Because this chair is like a foot and a half tall, and my knees get all cramped up every time we sit down for nearly two hours to do raw talk. Who said it's going to be two hours? Uh, We say that every week, that it's not going to be two hours, and it ends up being pretty much two hours. One day I'll get you a chair. How about that? That'll be nice. Yeah? One day. day. One day. (laughs) One day. One day. One day. Modest Yahoo. I I figured. I turn my face around. I feel it in your hand. I see it in your hand. I feel it in your hand. I don't know that's my anyway, Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com and welcome to Raw Talk episode number eighty one. That's right, we are creeping up on one hundred in like nineteen more episodes. <laughs> that's like nineteen more weeks or however many we've we've been very very consistent. I don't think we took what one week off. I think and we put in something else in that, but place. we never actually. Oh, we did take one. We did. Week we off actually without took a something. Week off. What was that for? I don't remember. I don't know. Was that when we were in Vegas? It, I don't remember now. I don't remember. Either. I don't remember what it was. But anyway, we have an interesting show this week. It's a lot of information. Yes. A ton of photo news on Stephen's a part. Lot. We've got um, a lot of discussion because I have something to talk about down here. You see all this other stuff. Yep. We've got the the gear of the week stuff we'll talk about, which is Nikon D610s is what we're recording with right now. My angle, Nikon D610. This angle, Nikon D610. This angle, Nikon D610. So normally on Steven's angle, there's a 51.2 for the Canon. Mm-hmm. Um, we're using my 51.4 from Nikon. And on my angle, it's, uh, it's, it's still the 27, whoa, 24 <laughs> to 72.8. And then the GoPro is still up there in the corner, blinking McBlinkerson. So let me tell you how this came about. I sent a proposal out to Nikon and also Canon. And either one of them that decided they wanted to send us some gear... Uh, I have a very good rapport with Nikon, as you know, even after the April Fool's Gate, which some people thought April was. Fool's Gate. <laughs> um, but no, they were, uh, they got it. They understood. And they're like, you know what? Would you like three D610s? Not to keep. There's a, I got to sign a thing every couple months, I think two months or whatever. And then I'm going to send back the D800, by the way, that I've had for like. Finally. <laughs> Over a year. Forever. Oh, I've had that for over a year because I lived at my old place. Holy God, yeah, I've had, had that thing for like almost two years I've had. The Since D-800. it came out. Yeah, I've had it for a while. <laughs> uh, I've just extended that thing over and over again. So anyway, the D610s are here. The reason we wanted to go with three, why do we want to go with three of the same camera? Uh, just so it's easier to set everything. You can pretty much set all of them the same way for the most part. I mean, there's still some tweaks with white balance just because we have a little bit different lighting set up on each of us. But yeah. for, for the most part, it's just set one and forget it and do the same for well, each. Yeah, plus they're, they're paired. They should have the same sensors, yeah. the same types of compression types of stuff. Just as sharp for each one. I mean, depending on the lenses, but still. Right. And the Atomos still works, so we can still do a clean out to the Atomos. What was one thing you were like, I can't figure out how to change the aperture? That's the only thing. Well, there's two things that I really don't not love about the D610, I guess, is the aperture you can't switch in live view. You have to make sure you're out of live view, which is kind of a pain when you're trying to adjust exposure. Yep. And then uh, also the uh, white balance. You can't fine tune it as much as the D800 and especially the D4S. Uh, The white balance goes in like increments of like 250. So uh, you go from like 5200 to like 50. 400 to 5600 and so forth something like that it's like they lock it in there so that you have to either go spend more money for the d800 Mm -hmm. or the d4s because they just as they get lower down the totem pole they want to just take away more and more of what the camera can do and there's like an advanced setting too on the white balance where you can go even farther and like shows like the spectrum and you can fine-tune it a little more but it's still not nearly as good as say for example the d4s but it also costs a fraction of that oh absolutely um, I'm going to mention Atomos now because we have a ton of Atomos stuff to talk we about. Do. A lot we of have news. a lot of the new things that came out at NAB. The NAB, it's NAB, right? NAB yes. at the NAB show. Uh, but anyway, you know that we use the Atomos on the Raw Talk. It's there. It allows us to do continuous recording as long as you have enough storage uh, with a clean out from just about any camera, including the GoPro. And we love the thing. Charger comes with the charger comes with uh oh we love that what's the new one not the new the new one we had to send back to them because the blade they sold out of it right Mm -hmm. the ninja blade and then they asked us to send our review unit back the one that we didn't even get to use yet we didn't even really get to touch it. i can't wait to use that thing because of how awesome the screen is oh and then one of the new ones which we're going to talk about is freaking even more 4k awesome we'll get to that we'll get to that (laughs) steven i just want to tell people about it so i'm so excited but atomos is doing some things and i'm not just saying it because we use it and and they are a sponsor but they keep pushing the envelope. Time and time again, it just keeps getting better and better. And I love seeing that in a company. Mm-hmm. And that's it, it's some of the most major news coming out of uh, NAB this, this week are companies that we 
are working with. Yeah. DJI Phantom has that new one. Atomos has this thing. There was, uh, what else? There was something else. Well, Rode's over there too, but they didn't announce anything. But so it's a bunch of new products that are getting a ton of play over there. Anyway, so that's Atomos. Um, and uh, what else should we do? Oh, you know what? Re- remember when the reader asked me for a code two weeks ago for, yeah, for a- the Adorama picks for a metal print? Well, mm-hmm. they finally got back to me. Nice. And they did give a code. Awesome. This is the code, people, for anybody out there. And you're going to save some money. I equated, the- anyway, before I tell you what. Code is PXJARED25. All one word, PXJARED25. You're going to get 25% off an Illuminized print or your whole Illuminized print order until the end of April. So when April 2014 is over, this code will no longer work, but that's 25% off. And remember what 20, if you buy a $180 thing, you're going to save like 46 bucks. Yeah, it's a nice chunk. Right. Shipping is only seven bucks, and I recommend I recommend buying the UPS shipping. Pay the money instead of using the free stuff because UPS is just gonna handle your stuff a little bit better. Um, Sutter, this means I would like a pen. <laughs> yeah, th- th- Steven's sitting here, Eckert's sitting here, going, looking at Sutter. Sutter's looking at him, going, I don't know what this means. And for anybody sitting at home, you know, I'm making a pen writing motion. <laughs> Did you not know what that was? I really didn't because the only time he ever looks over, he does the watch know, thing yeah. to tell me what time or for me to tell him the time. <laughs> well, at least he wasn't doing that. Why would I be doing that? Yo, don't show that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he was going like this with a pen in his hand, without a pen. All right. You got it, Sutter? I Holy got my pen. Thank you, you got Sutter. your pen. What do you want to take a note about? Putting uh, that up on I the screen? I wanted to put that on the screen, yeah. All right. So anyway, that's good until the end of uh, April. 25% off. You can't go wrong with something like I love the freaking Illuminized prints. And let's, uh, I got something to do. While we continue on Sutter, I need you to do something. How much time's left? Um, 10 minutes. All right. Go into the elevator. You don't look. Go into the elevator. All right. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Because I kind of know what it is, but I don't know what it is. All right, there's two things in there. Only bring out the thing that's right in front of the door. It's open. Just turn it until it opens. All right? Don't look. All right. The, fir- the thing on the right. Bring that out. Put your po- Hold on. Don't bring it out yet. Put, put your fingers in your ears. My fingers and go in my la, ears? la 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 so you can't hear anything. La 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 la. Right, let's go. La, I can't hear anything. Hello, la la la. No, over there. I'm keeping my eyes open. Though. All right, right there. Is that okay. All right, stand up. Can I? I stand, stand up? up. Yeah. Get rid of your stool. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> and now roll that over. It should be the perfect height. It should be ready to go. What? Oh my god. Oh. What happened? Wait, is it too low? No, no, no. I think. Wait, let me see. Okay, so it's the it's the right hand. So anybody at home, I, uh, we just rolled out of the elevator. Oh. It's a little too high. Uh, we got, I got to check the Hold camera, on. just a little bit lower. So what do you what what I just rolled out is a Herman Miller chair, and this is a Mira two Herman Miller chair. <laughs> I can't First believe off, you got me a chair. Well, mine will be here tomorrow. I got a different version. We got to like lock the wheels though. Well, that's something that I talked about. We're gonna have to figure out how to lock the wheels. Oh Are you God, rolling it's away? So much comfier. You could just I'm gaff tape them. Yeah, we can get. How, how's it feel? It feels comfy. I got to adjust it a little can bit. You, but. Can you uh, walk around here and look at this camera to make sure he's still in? Sorry, we're taking this extra time because I didn't want to just have the chair sitting here when you got here. It came this morning. Did it really? Yeah. Perfect timing. It came this morning. Mine's coming tomorrow. I think I've talked about getting new chairs in here <laughs> since the beginning, like a year ago. Well, it's going to make everything much better. How's it? It's good, Sutter? Cool. So this is a Herman Miller Mira 2. They're one of the most expensive chairs out on the market, but I reached out to them and they set us up with two chairs. Check out Herman Miller's site. Um, anytime you've seen those mesh-looking chairs with the things on the bottom, those are the uh, Arion chairs. They make them. They are put together. And how's your back feel? It has that lumbar support? It's good. I got to figure out how to make the back a little tighter, though, okay. um, to bring it up a little bit. Okay. Reach behind you. You can reach it. No, no, no. Reach behind you on your back. You feel it's those right there. nipples? Uh, oh, wait. I think... Push it up, and it's going to p- go into your back more. Yeah, that's some nice it, lumbar support. It feels good, right? <laughs> yeah. Some nice lumbar some nice support. Lumbar support. And, you're, and you, you can move the arms in it. Anyway, we're, we're yeah. spending... We're not going to... Go to Herman... Check out the Herman Miller chair. Look up the Mira 2. That's this one. I'm getting the one called the Embody. Ooh. The Embody's... Aw- well, they said... I'm, I call them. They're like, are you going to be sitting for like six, eight, ten hours a day in it? I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, they're like, well, we're going to... You need the Embody. 
The Embody so happens to be like a fifteen hundred dollar office chair. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, but if you're gonna sit in an office chair yeah. and you want a chair that's gonna last you for 10, 15 years, so what? If it's fifteen hundred dollars and it costs you a hundred bucks a year to have comfort instead of buying a piece of crap chair, I mean, how good does that chair feel? It feels good. That's and only like nine hundred dollars. Oh my god! Oh my. It, Still. It's an expensive chair. Wow. And the thing is, like, I've been looking for a chair. Um, just for home too. I got. I didn't know like what good brands to get. And Herman stuff. Herman Miller. I get. Yeah, that's well, apparently if a you solid can afford brand. It. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know about that, but like when I'm doing raw talk, for example, when I'm editing the podcast, I'm just like, oh god, it's been like six hours, and my back just kills me because the chair yeah. I have is like a piece of crap. Well, let me tell you, one of the reasons that one of the things, like when I reach out to a company, they have to get it. Like, why would we give you some chairs to sit in, right? And I'm like, you got. And I called them up, and they got it. They got it because I was like, look, we're photographers. We're photographers who spend good money on quality gear, mm -hmm. lenses we spend money on, bodies we spend money on, and that's that's just shooting. Mo most of the time we spend is editing in front of the computer. So if you're going to sit in a quality something or you're going to have a crappy chair for the rest of your life, well, that's not worth it. So no. I was just like, look, we sit in chairs all freaking day long editing. So anyway, enough about the on chair. On this week's chair talk. <laughs> hey, you know what, Sutter? Go back into the elevator. Oh, the God. chair of the week is... Bring out the box that's on the left-hand side. <laughs> There's something else in there. Oh, do you, well, sit down. We'll save that until the, until the time. Next time you change it, because you don't have enough time. You're going to need more time. All right, go get, just go, get it out of the, go get it out of the elevator. Bring it out into the middle of the floor, please. <laughs> this is what this I is know what you of. thought it was. This is what I thought it was. So too. for anybody out there, Mr. Sutter, who was 18 last week, actually became 19 during the show and refu and didn't tell anybody. Didn't tell, look at the size of this box. Look at the size of this oh box. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> didn't tell anybody that it was his birthday. Where'd you get this box at? The chair came in it oh, this morning. That's perfect. <laughs> he didn't tell. Me. All right, start opening it up from the top. Oh my! God. He didn't tell anybody that it was his birthday. He's I know. Like, I don't really celebrate birthdays because I'm a hipster, <laughs> right? So anyway, I found out it was his birthday because I, I don't know how. Because Instagram, he posted something on Instagram. Oh, the balloons that his and girlfriend you texted me, gave you're him. Like, did you know it's Sutter's birthday? I'm like, no. So it felt, it felt like crap. We need to give him a. We 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 thought I needed to give him a gift, right? Yes. I would have gotten a cake, but he's a hipster. He probably doesn't eat it. There is no stripper in the box. That was one thing I did ask uh, it's, it's Stephen the guy if we from should. Pizza have done. Brain. Yes, the guy from Pizza Brain. <laughs> or you can turn it. You need to get to the stuff at the bottom. <laughs> Here, tilt tilt that towards the front, just in case anybody needs to can it's see. So look at it. Look at it. Look inside. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Oh boy! So the Sutter's reaching deep down into a box. You get it. That's. And that's it. Sutter, I just, Sutter, Sutter is in, in the, the box. box now. <laughs> it's better than dick in a box. It's it's a hipster in a box. <laughs> All right, bring that stuff over. Show us what you got. Actually, take it back over to your table, uh, your spot, and tell us what you got. This is too funny. That huge box for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, for and don't mess up the time on the clock. All right, so what do you have there? For those listening, by the way, this box is literally the size of Sutter. <laughs> yeah, I got all the way under it. Um, there's an Instax wide camera, um, two packs of film, <laughs> and I'm not going to say what that is. Here, let me see it. Throw that over here. <laughs> You're... Oh, it's too funny. It got tape stuck on it. Billy Boy. <laughs> Fun pack. So when you and I were out at ABN, <laughs> yeah. they were giving this company, Billy Boy, it gave us like, like a million condoms. Gave us so many condoms. They're like, here, have a bag of condoms. Well, then they sent me these Billy Boy, the exciting different condom. Oh, sorry. Ear, earmuffs? No, this is, this is not explicit. This is safety. This is sexual edumacation. Sex. This is practicing safe sex. This is what it's all about. Billy Boy. And these expire. This expires soon. <laughs> so it's a, good, it's a good thing you have a girlfriend because it expires in month six and two months. So you better get to working. So the fun pack includes one vibrating ring, two refreshment towelettes, four superior latex condoms, two times extra lubrication, and two times special comfort. There you go. So much fun can be had. Have fun with that. All right, back to the show. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes, How dude, much time left? Uh, probably like four minutes. All right. Happy, Three minutes. Happy, 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 <laughs> happy birth birthday. I'm changing the word so we don't get sued. All right. I, I didn't know that song's copyrighted because it's so old. Yeah, it, it's, it's okay. It's in so the thing about now. it, the thing about it is, people have paid for years, and then they've just recently found out that 
they can use it. They they're they're basically taking get in taking money from people that they shouldn't be taking hmm. because they they can just use the damn song. Um, so uh, this is the remix. Look version? it up. No, that was the remix. Anyway, happy birthday. The He's nineteen. Version. All right. <laughs> um, now that we got all that stuff out of the way, um, I was in Chicago. That's why you can sort of see the sunburn on my face. Not really anymore. Good. Yesterday was worse. Well, yes. The funny, I wore my, my glasses, my sunglasses out there, and I went to the game. I was speaking in Chicago, first and foremost, to 150 store owners, camera store owners, about the internet and, and, and YouTube and making stuff. And I was giving them an education on how they can do this stuff to try to get more eyes to their site, right? Because that, that's something important to do. And, and a lot of those people need help. How's your chair? Good. It's good. I'm just still trying to, to yeah, get used to it. Yeah, you'll wiggle it just a little bit. Wiggling there. Is it comfortable though? It is comfortable. Damn, I want one. It's uh, <laughs> dude, the, and I'm also like now at the height of like the actual table now. Where and he's still good I'm in there. Always slumped over and have to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I can tell I'm still the same height because the microphone I didn't change. Oh, it's all right. Still perfect. Anyway, so. so Chicago. I love speaking. And the great thing about when somebody hires me to go speak is that they're always worried that I'm going to do something that they're worried like they're worried that I'm a loose cannon or that I'm going to get out there and I'm going to do something to embarrass them and maybe I put on that perception when we're on the phone the first time because I'm just protecting myself and making sure I get what I need but I deliver every time I go out there to speak you do. and they love it I mean you saw me in in in, 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 in Los Angeles uh, in Vegas talking and that's I just love it I want to push those other people off the stage anyway this was just me talking so I was just up there helping them out we brought some of them down to make fake videos that they filmed while they were there with a product and oh, then nice. I schooled them on what they can do and I was like all right I saw what you did there but here's some tips not everybody's going to do it as well as as I do it takes practice I also showed them the video from 2010 2008 the really bad one of Wait, me sitting there the Nikon lenses one Hi Jared Jared no. Poland no. here No no okay, no I got to do it no good. no no good So yeah stuff like that anyway it went well. I love speaking. I, it was cool to meet different store owners that actually still have stores from around the country. Yeah. That was really cool. And then I went to the Cubs game because the Phillies were there. So it was Phillies versus Cubs. I sat in the bleachers. Two other fro readers. Uh, there were three other fro readers that came out. Nice. Uh, one didn't sit with us, but he came over to say hi, which was awesome. And I got sunburnt because it was actually 45 and sunny. I took my jackets off because I came prepared. Anybody doesn't know, Chicago in April, you never, it could be windy as hell and really just terrible weather. And it was beautiful for us to sit out there. I saw your picture. It looked awesome. Yeah, I sat right on the right on the fence. So did the Phillies win? Yes, yeah. the Phillies did win. Awesome. My brother actually went to that game. I meant to text you. What? He's from New Orleans. What? When I went to his wedding, um, but they were traveling around and they went to Chicago for that game. And I meant to say I texted him and I was like, "Look for this dude with a fro." <laughs> Getting <laughs> you know, beat up in him. the outfield. Yeah, right. Which I didn't get beat up in the outfield. <laughs> All right. Why don't we just skip to photo news? Uh, we'll get the photo news, and then I've got some other things to talk about, of course. We already did Steven's gift. We already did your chair. All right. <laughs> we already did that. this. Time to start Raw Talk. We already started Raw <laughs> Talk. If you didn't just distract us so much. <laughs> First up, we have Nikon. They released their new D4S promo film by Corey Rich called Dedication. We saw a uh, teaser for this not that long ago. Um, but they also released a 14-minute behind-the-scenes video showcasing the making of the film as well. And it features photographers David Black, or Dave Black, Robert Beck, and George Carbus each telling their story and what photography means to them. I mean, they got really emotional in this, too. And if you need inspiration or just a pick-me-up, this is definitely a must-see. Uh, I mean, you saw it. What did you I, think about it? I watched it? it. I loved it. I mean, Corey I Rich is fantastic at what he does. Uh, Sean Corrigan did the D4 video behind yeah. the scenes. He was out there with Corey Rich the first time. Did he so go this time? He wasn't on this one, I don't believe. I'd like to talk to him about that. But the video, I don't get, care if it's a D4S or a 1DX or a 5D Mark III. When they produce this amazing content, I will sit there and watch it. I love the behind-the-scenes look more than the actual I ending product because I can see the, that Dave Black guy, how excited he was when he got the picture that he needed. You just, oh, or I just missed it, or how he's laying on the ground, or how he's in a, in a, in a front-end loader. Just the way that the guy's enthusiasm for photography and that the fact that they captured that is great. So... The quality is awesome. Yes, they use the D4S. And anytime you spend good money, you're going to make some quality product, whether it's a D3300 or a D4S. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just about watching this 14 minutes and being inspired about what they what they captured. Yeah, it's inspiration at its finest right there. Uh, moving on, dog lovers need to check this one out. Photog <laughs> <laughs> Photographer <laughs> Sarolta Bond. <laughs> 
<laughs> released a photo series simply called Help Dogs with Images, uh, where she took average pictures of dogs from photo shelters and photoshopped them into these epic and mythical backgrounds and scenarios, uh, making them look just awesome. Uh, some examples include like a dog on top of the Empire State Building, reenacting the King Kong scene, uh, a dog rocking like a top hat with an awesome background, one dog holding the moon in his paws with like a starry background. Really fun stuff. Starry, starry <laughs> night. The best part though is that uh, once one of the dogs is adopted, she then sends a print of the final image to the new owners of her subject as basically a thank you. Thank you. And she says in quotes uh, this Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. There's a low chance for uh, shelter animals to get adopted because they get very little visibility. That's why it's a really great idea that everybody can be a hero with a single iPhone if they take a picture of their shelter of a shelter dog and upload it to the internet. Uh, end quote. So from now until June 30th, she's accepting user submitted photographs of abandoned animals uh, who need a Hi. home. That she'll. Uh... I'm Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> if you didn't know, there's a new animal that dies every single day. And when that dog dies, an angel loses its wings. And then you feel sad. So for only $27 a month, you too could help a dying animal. Forget the starving children in, in, in Africa. Who needs that when there's animals that are dying and need to be adopted? Now that I've made you cry, we'll get back to Raw Talk. I'm Sarah McLaughlin, and I approve this message. I'm Sarah McLaughlin, change channel. <laughs> Uh, moving on, I wanted to bring this one up uh, for those that enjoy shooting lunar eclipses or just stars in general. Uh, on April 15th, around 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tax day, by the way. Yes, which is this Tuesday uh, morning, actually. So the podca podcast people can do this, but by the time this video comes out, it's probably going to be over. You missed it! <laughs> <laughs> Another reason to sign up on iTunes. Uh, but a rare blood moon full total eclipse will take place. Turn around <laughs> every now and then. That. I get a little bit lonely when I see that fucking look in your eyes. <laughs> turn around. You're the turn around guy. Every now and then. Turn around. Bright <laughs> eyes. Because every now and then I fall apart. I fucking uh. need you more. <laughs> I fucking need you more than I. Oh, fuck, I fucked the song up. Earmuffs. <laughs> Earmuffs. Turn around, bright eyes. Because every now and then I fall apart. I fucking need you more <laughs> than ever. I need you more than ever <laughs> and whenever you hold him it goes and ever something if i never make it to the end of the time i bet it's happened like a powder cake turn it around oh i need you tonight yeah forever's gonna start tonight forever's gonna start as once upon a time i was falling apart now i'm just i'm falling apart <laughs> Something of this him in the total eclipse of the door still open so people can probably hear me in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Old closer door. All right, so uh, turn around, bright eyes. Back to uh, total eclipse of the red blood cell. That was so loud. Was that, was that good? That was epic. It was I, amazing. I got pipes, man. You do. You got some serious pipes and going on. And people love when I sing, so I'm, do. I think I'll they do a 20% more You should put like, episode. a live album out. A Dude, whole compilation. We should, we should do a live album. <laughs> like a parody Just album. do parody albums of songs and make it photography related. We should uh, do something come April 1st next year. No, 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 no. <laughs> April 2nd. April 2nd. Screw that. <laughs> it's a real thing. Releasing now. Frono's photo resings the hits. The classics. The classics. Like. Like. Uh, Start spreading the news. <laughs> I'm leaving today. Jar of hearts. Do you want to be a part of it? New York, New York. Frank Sinatra. That's Frank Sinatra. And then Christina Perry. No, give me some <laughs> other band names. Uh, the Dan Band. No, band. Well, Dan Band is good. <laughs> Dan Band. Who else, Sutter? Why don't you give me some names of some bands? Creed. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What's that? What's that song? With legs wide open. <laughs> Something like that. Under the moonlight, a whisper in your ears. I'll give you everything. One, oh one. The only way is. I feel thunder. 
All right, and so ahead. much more. You uh, can buy this at fourteen ninety five. All right, go ahead. Handle, before blah, blah, blah. people really shoot me. Uh, but anyway, so this rare blood moon eclipse will take place, which will be the first of four lunar eclipses to happen over the next two years. Uh, now, this will only be viewable from North America. So unfortunately for you, other people, South America, South people. America, UK, <laughs> everyone else, you can't see this. Um, so if you miss this, though, you will have another chance in about six months. And then I think every six months from there. So at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. I can go up on my roof. I think they said 3 a.m. is going to be like the full total eclipse. But uh, 2 a.m. is when it's going to start happening. Or right, 1, uh, 1 a.m. is gonna, when it's going to start happening. 2 a.m. is when it's going to be decent. Yeah. Tuesday morning, Monday night, whatever you want to call it. Can you it. please remind me? I will. I'm probably going to actually be up probably still editing like Raw Talk or something at that point. No, it's already Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, it's Monday it morning, ex- you mean? Yeah, Monday, it's, it's Monday and the Tuesday, Tuesday night. morning. Got Monday it. and the Tuesday night, correct. No, Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Didn't Tuesday I say that? morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you said night. I thought I said Monday night and the Tuesday morning. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> a new video showcasing the story behind the world's most viewed photo is now online. So after announcing that they will no longer be supporting Windows XP anymore, Microsoft released a video about their classic Bliss wallpaper, which came stock with every Windows <clears throat> uh, XP PC. Um, it's a behind-the-scenes mini-documentary with the actual photographer who took the image, Char- Charles O'Rear. He opens up about how he took the photo, how he I'm wasn't Charles sure. Charles O'Rear. <laughs> <laughs> I was, took the photo on the Windows XP type of thing. That's me, Charles O'Rear, and I made no money, probably. Chip, chip. But he wasn't sure how, you know, what Microsoft wanted or, or what the engineers would think of it. And apparently, obviously, this image blew up and it's considered the most viewed image ever to date. How much did he get paid? Uh, it didn't say. That's what I want to know. Yeah, that's what I want to know, too. I'm sure. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they showed his house and everything and. Uh, he's not living in like a mansion or anything like that, but well, maybe he's got a ton of money saved away in the bank. It's just like the uh, Rolling Stones logo they, that they paid like 50 bucks for. Yeah. That's because before they were known, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, some big news this week. Adobe has officially released their iPad version of Lightroom. It's called Lightroom Mobile. I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. It was rumored to be coming out. The app is only available to users with a Creative Cloud subscription, though. Uh, Lightroom Mobile integrates seamlessly with the full version of Lightroom 5.4. You need to upgrade if you don't have 5.4. And by the way, 5.4 now accepts the uh, Nikon D4S RAW files. Nice. Which are the same as the DNGs that I converted from the other program because I tested it out with the same settings. Yeah. So it's good to know that those DNGs that I converted are all the same. Yeah. Uh, so for PC and Mac users, obviously with Lightroom 5.4, you can do this. Uh, users can log in with their Adobe ID account to access the content stored in their desktop version of Lightroom via smart previews of the content from the desktop app. Uh, the files also can be downloaded to allow for offline editing if you're not going to have access to Wi-Fi or anything like that. Now, Lightroom Mobile offers much of the same functionality as the desktop version, like your basic edit functions and stuff like that. Um, and all changes made in Lightroom Mobile sync to Lightroom 5.4 on the desktop, complete with history states and all of that jazz. Now, photos edited in Lightroom Mobile can be saved to your iPad's camera roll or shared via social networking sites, which the desktop doesn't really offer. Uh, Images taken on the iPad can be imported directly into the app as well, and the app also includes uh, slideshow capabilities if you want to present something to a client or whatever. Uh, It's available as a free download for the iPad in the App Store, and compatibility uh, for now is limited to iPad 2 and above running iOS 7, and it'll be coming to the iPhone soon, too, uh, which and I think an Android version is apparently in the works as well. Uh, so the question is, you know, will this be full raw support for mobile? That kind of stuff is that coming in the well, near future? Well, it can for do like it. iPhone and stuff like that. Well, I mean, who knows about that? But yeah. here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's also another podcast I listen to by uh, Alec Baldwin. It's called Here's the Thing. It's a good one. Um, I upgraded the 5.4 mm-hmm. because I bought a. I upgraded to Lightroom five a while back for seventy nine bucks, and then. Um, I was debating doing the Creative Cloud for nine ninety five a month, and I got to the checkout screen, and then I was reading the fine print, and it's like, you, this gives you a year of service at nine ninety five, and then it's like, but after that we may we have the right to raise the price, and I got to that, and I was just like, well, come on, the Creative Cloud yeah. subscription, oh, so it's just big. like, okay, so it's nine ninety five now. Well, am I? Are you grandfathered in? Well, I'm, do, no, you're not grandfathered a, in because it sucks. says you it have. They be. have the they have the right to raise the price after a year, after that twelve months. So I want to be locked in at that price. I mean, it's okay. You want to raise it a buck or two after three, two, three, four years because it just whatever or more support or something. But I hope they decide to just keep it at nine ninety five. I ended up canceling and not purchasing it yet because I'm like, well, I just spent eighty bucks 
So before the next upgrade, when it's time, instead of spending 80 bucks for the upgrade, just do the I'll just do the subscription because that's almost a year of subscription right there. Yeah, it makes sense. So that's just what I've been thinking about. Um, what else did I want to bring up regarding the subscription? Uh, oh, and apparently it got extended again for the 9,000th time. Yeah, There's I think it's till like the end of June now or something. I don't know exact I mean, I'll, numbers. I'll probably but. just end up doing it because it gives me... Photoshop, and it gives me Lightroom. And the Behance, you can't forget about that. And the 20 gigs of That Behance. you'll never use. <laughs> uh, we have the legal case involving a same-sex couple and the photography studio that refused to shoot their wedding back in 2006 uh, reached its conclusion 2006? last week. 2006? 2006, this has been. Eight years? Eight years in the making. Um, so they reached a conclusion last week when the Supreme Court refused to hear the case. So basically, it's dead on arrival. Um, some background information on the story, if you guys aren't familiar with it. The, dis- the dispute began in 2006 when photographers Elaine and Jonathan Hugh Gwenin told same-sex couple Vanessa Willock and Misty Collinsworth that Ooh, they Misty <laughs> Collinsworth. only covered yeah. traditional weddings. Uh, now Willock, Did they say that we only cover traditional weddings? That's what they told them, apparently. Okay. Uh, now, Willock and Collinsworth found another photographer, but they filed a complaint against... Uh, Elaine Photography with the New Mexico Human Rights Commission claiming that the studio's policy violated the state's anti-discrimination law. Um, now, I know you wanted to comment on this case yeah, and about what the Supreme Court said. Well, they, they chose not to hear it, right? They chose not to hear it, and I think they just related it back to... It Civil being, rights. Yeah, exactly. As in discrimination. As Which it's is no different than saying is. that they denied a Mexican... I'll start with Mexicans. Mexican... African American, Asian, anything Anybody. different than them. Yeah. And that's discrimination. So when I read that line, like, I think as a photographer, you can pick and choose who you should photograph, right? If you're not comfortable doing a same sex wedding, that's on you. I could care less. I have no problem shooting a same sex wedding. And we yeah. talked about this before that with, with, with uh, equal rights that people have and uh, gay marriage, gay marriage, right? I can say gay marriage. Same, uh, sex, same ma- sex marriage, no, gay, gay marriage, whatever. Mm. Gay is happy. Who cares? Same sex, not same sex, doesn't matter. But having the those weddings come out now, oh God, no puns intended on all of this stuff, <laughs> um, is an opportunity for business. I love. I said this before. There is. I guarantee you that ninety eight percent of same sex marriage weddings, especially with guys, generalization here, uh, stereotypes in my opinion, are going to have better food, better. They're going to be better dressed. It's going to be more fun. I just think that there's a lot of money being spent on this stuff, and you can capitalize as a photographer. Totally. So for these people to say no, they shouldn't have said, no, we don't shoot same-sex marriages if they didn't want to shoot it. If they're not comfortable with it, you say something like, we're already booked. Yep. All right? I don't agree with it. I I would shoot any wedding that came along. Would I shoot a KKK wedding? Probably. Nobody asked me that question. I just asked myself that question and answered it. Why not? <laughs> I, or a I neo-Nazi like, wedding? I mean, I feel like that's a little different. Because but they wouldn't ask you in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> it's but that's like, not the same thing as... Imagine that. The, the, the KKK comes to Frono's photo and it's like, we want you to shoot our wedding. And then they're there burning crosses and, and all this stuff. And it's <laughs> just like... terrible. You're it looking, is terrible. It is terrible. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know why you brought it up. Is what well, I'm, because it was it, it's just bringing bringing an extreme to the table. Yeah, that makes you sense. You know, there are there's neo Nazi groups, and that's their freedom of choice. They can do that. Uh, and if they were, if, if I was to say no, I can't shoot it. I mean, see, is that discrimination? I mean, would I feel comfortable going to a Nazi wedding? No, I don't think I don't think ninety eight percent of the people in the world, whether they're Jewish or not Jewish, would feel comfortable at a neo Nazi wedding. Yeah. Right. So if I said no and they came and asked me, would that be discrimination? Yes. Right. Technically, it's discrimination. I guess technically it is. It's just it's just it's one of the it's one of those things. It's uh, it is technically discrimination, but I wouldn't do it. I'd be I, I guess I'd say I'm not comfortable. And then they could kind of file a complaint on me for the same thing. Really, if they wanted to make a stink. Yeah, it's just I maybe I'm going on too far just with extremes. Moral of the story is uh they just shoot whatever, just shoot it. Yeah, no big deal. I mean, it's just no more harm, clients no foul. for you. I don't see why. Yeah, you more clients wouldn't take them in. Uh, we have moving forward. This next story is a little older since it broke literally the day we recorded last Raw Talk, but I wanted to bring it up anyway. Uh, photographer Lindsay Va- Va- 
Villa Toro of Love, love Song Photography gave a daughter the surprise of a lifetime when she. Are put, you asking to hear a love song? No, I'm not gonna write you a love song. You done? Yeah. She gave the daughter uh, a daughter the surprise of a lifetime when she put together a pretend wedding ceremony with where her dying father got the chance to walk her down the aisle. Uh, the photographer met the Zetz family since she spends her free time working with charities and cancer organizations, uh, offering photo shoots. Um, so now Jim Zetz, the father, is a 62-year-old patient who was diagnosed with uh, stage four pancreatic cancer, which is a death sentence. Pretty much, there is nothing any stage four. Well, but there's for the nothing they can do with the pancreas. Exactly. Uh, but he they scheduled a shoot with a photographer who then found out about their daughter uh, Josie's birthday, which was the following week. So she offered to do something for her as well. When she got home, she posted a story to her website to see if she could raise some money or gifts for Josie's 11th birthday. This could be the last birthday that she gets to spend with her father. So she wanted to make sure she did something, you know, meaningful. Uh, She then got the idea of doing a surprise wedding so the father can walk his daughter down the aisle. In 72 hours, Villatoro raised over $2,000 in birthday presents from her own clients so she could get a wedding dress from LA Fashion Week, catering, flowers, tux, uh, hair, makeup, and more, all donated again by local vendors, her clients, all that. Um, Villataro didn't even meet Josie until the day of the wedding, too, who says it was the best day of her life, which is great. Uh, The photographer then put together a touching video slideshow of highlights from the full day, which is called Walk Me Down the Aisle, Daddy. And Villataro, Villatoro, I think is how you pronounce it, says her goal with in shoots like this is, in quotes, to preserve that person, most people focus on the death and not the beauty of that person, who they were, and the memories that they leave, end quote. So it's just a really beautiful video and, and a touching thing that she did. A yeah. great thing that she did. Well, I mean, that's stage four. The guy's going to die. Yeah. Won't walk his daughter down the aisle. So this is what she has. I mean, it's the same thing that I've gone through. Like, my mom won't be able to walk me with my dad and stuff like that. And it's just... It, you, you watch this stuff and you're like, it, it hits home when you're part of it. I know. And it's just like, I mean, because that's one of the things that they miss. You know, when your mom dies young or your dad dies, anybody dies at any point and you don't get to do the things that you wanted to do or you didn't get the opportunity to to partake or to help or to change who you were. And, and so, like, I won't have that. My mom won't be here to take care of grandkids, which she would have loved and do all that stuff. Not to bring it back to me, but it makes me think personally about my situation because that is amazing what they did there, giving the girl that ability. And it it sucks. It flat out sucks no matter what. It's at least something, but it definitely hit home because it's just like that's just something I won't have. Yeah. Never had. Yeah. It's it's a shame. Um, I mean, at least this girl got something before her her father, you know, goes. Um, And a similar story... uh, of the photo community coming together for a good cause. A uh, four-year-old girl named Eliza O'Neill has been diagnosed with a very rare and terminal San Filippo syndrome, which is going to pretty much deteriorate deteriorate her body and brain functionality within the next few years. Uh, photographers and photo companies teamed up for her to help her uh, family raise funds to find a cure for this terrible disease. And apparently there is a cure out there, but it costs like $2.5 million to test it out or something insane. Um, so with the help of Borrow Lenses, DLK, uh, Guillermo Castellanos and Smug Mug. Uh, photographer Benjamin Von Wong flew to South Carolina and filmed a video about uh, Eliza in hopes to spread her story. Uh, he stayed with the family for nine days, learning their story, interviewing them, watching Eliza play. And then he made this great kind of little mini documentary video with um, interviews from the family. Uh, so far, they've raised over $200,000 at the time of this recording. I think it went up like from fifty thousand dollars within like a week to two hundred thousand yeah, well, dollars. They need a million. On it, they that need thing. a million. That's yeah. not going to be easy unless a major donor comes out and is just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they still have a, a couple months to go sure. before it ends this uh, fundraiser, yeah. but still, the fact that they got that much so far and it's the, the story is just yeah. Uh, yeah. Von Wong did that. Von yeah. Wong will be in Israel also. Oh on yeah, on the same trip as me. Nice. He yeah. seems like a cool dude. Never yeah. met him, but. Uh, And moving forward to some gear news. Now, this is, uh, we're getting more on the tech side of stuff to end off photo news. So we're done with death? We're done with that. Unfortunately, I had to bring it up, but yeah. (laughs) Uh, It's something that uh, I think these videos need to be seen. Yeah, I agree. Uh, But again, moving forward to some gear news. Sony has announced the A7S. It's uh, the new full frame mirrorless camera, which boasts some insane ISO capabilities. That's actually what the S stands for, which is sensitivity, as in ISO sensitivity. Yeah, it's 10% more sensitive. It's 10% more sensitive. Kind of like Sutter. As far as some of the. (laughs) 
He will with that Billy boy. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't make you more sensitive. It desensitizes you slightly. Well, then it's the opposite. Uh, as far as some of the worth noting specs go, though, it shoots 8-bit 422-4K. Not 10-bit like the Atomos, but 8-bit. Uh, it's still good at 4K, which is insane, but only when it's hooked up to an external recorder via HDMI like the Atomos. Yeah, because they released it together. Correct. The product show, show that new Atomos. I'll let you keep which going. Which we'll get to in, uh, in a minute. Um, it shoots 1080 up to 60 frames per second. These are some other worth noting specs. Uh, 120 frames per second at 720p with 50 megabits per second XAVS. Uh, XAVCS format, so it's broadcast quality in camera. Like Nikon shoot at around 20 megabits per second. Canons are about 30. This is 50, which really? is crazy. 12.2 uh, megapixel sensor. The largest, the larger pixels are also said to provide better dynamic range uh, and color fidelity. And ISO range from 50 to 409,600, like the D4s. So here we go again, right? The lower megapixels. Lower megapixels, but better quality. Yep. So it's nobody gives all a full shit circle about again. the tw 12 megapixels. I don't care. That's great. 12 megapixels means bigger pixels that they can make better, that are going to gather more light, that's going to give you better quality video. The one thing that's going to have to change that is kind of stuck in the middle right now is form factor. It's shaped like a still camera, yet it's meant for video primarily, right? Yeah, I mean, this one, the A7S, but it can also be used for other things too, right. just it, like stills. It, it, just, it just feels like... I, I think it's shaped like a DSLR, <laughs> but it's the size of a you know, point-and-shoot camera. Right, well, no, it, it's the same as the A7R mm -hmm. and, and A7, the A7 whatever the other one is. But it, it's just interesting, the different sensor, the quality that's being put out. I'm just talking about the shape. Mm -hmm. You know, just... What, Sutter? What? He's raising his hand. What? Do most video-based cameras really have a specific shape, though? Because if you look at, like, the 1DC, it looks just like the 1DX, and then, like, Which the is another one that I question. Box yeah, it's very true. Well, it's not... Be I, I don't get it. They have the 1DC, and then they've got the 300... Uh, the 100, the 300, 300 and the 500, 500. That are shaped like a video, like, in a more camera-oriented setup. That is more for the video market. Right. That's geared toward that, at but least. But so is the 1DC. But now I think it's just all coming together it's homogenizing yeah exactly they're gonna find the way to, yeah I, i'm not ripping on it. i'm just saying that it's it's going to keep changing it's interesting to to see and that. it's cool that they released it with atomos uh because it has atomos support right out of the mm -hmm. box which is great uh let me see what else is there for that story now no price announced just yet but it's expected to start shipping this summer and moving forward with with some more gear news, DJI has announced an upgrade to the Phantom 2 Vision, which we just kind of previewed last week. Yep. Uh, the quadcopter with the new Phantom 2 Vision Plus. Which I knew about, but couldn't say anything. Exactly. Uh, the upgrade features a three-axis gimbal compared to the single-axis gimbal on the Vision 2. Uh, they also doubled the Wi-Fi reach, which is now 2,000 feet. That's pretty wow. insane. 50% increase in top flight speed, which is about 50 feet no, per second. Really? It's now faster? So does that mean it goes like, what, 45 or yeah, something? It used to, it does 35 said 35 miles an hour maybe the new one does 35 and the old one did 30 yeah well either way it's still crazy that's fast uh, and you can now tilt 90 degrees with the camera so you can actually hover above someone and look straight straight down, down. instead of actually turning the camera i mean turning the actual quad well, quadcopter which makes it hard and, and not stable because, exactly because it was yeah i mean we see when you would fly to the right and fly to the left the camera would be on that angle mm -hmm. and it would jitter a little bit. This three-way axis gimbal, whether you get the one with the GoPro, because they now have a three-way axis gimbal, um, but the Vision now built in that you can rotate everything. The re Here, let's talk about the Vision. 1300 bucks, right? 1360 or $70 is what I saw. Uh, it just says 1300 It's $100 more than the Phantom 2. Right, and I think for or 360 or something, for $1,360, it may come with a second battery, which That's would be awesome. It, yeah. um, but where was I going? Uh, you Go were talking about the GoPro and the gimbal. The gimbal. Oh, mainly. right, 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 right. So there's there's the people out there who are like, well, go with the GoPro one. If you go with the GoPro one, it's less expensive because it's eight ninety nine for a Phantom. Then you have to get the gimbal, which is like two, three hundred bucks. Get everything separate. Then you have to connect it. Then you don't have any preview. You can't fly this thing blind because if you lose sight of it, how are you going to bring it back? Other than turning it off and losing connection so that it flies back to you. Then you have to rig it up with other transmitters and stuff to, to third party it, which is not a bad option. We have to see whether the GoPro is probably better when it comes to video in the long run because of the Pro Tune. Mm -hmm. It gives you the ability to pretty much shoot raw. The other is a little more compressed, but I can't wait to try it because that three way axis gimbal is going to stabilize the hell out of it the fact that you can tilt down 90 degrees and shoot straight down 
the sample videos that they came up with were awesome. They look really I mean, cool. It's so professional. This is so pushing the envelope of the future of what we're doing. It's just evolving with video and evolving with stills. And DJI is one of the companies out there that is really at the forefront of pushing the future of the uh, quadricopters. And they call them drones themselves now, too. So I'm going to retire that and it's going to call it a drone. Oh, now I can go back to calling it and a drone a and I can yell at <laughs> uh, Now, the, the thing I love about this company specifically is that they just released the Vision 2 only six months ago and now they already have this incredible yeah. upgrade. They realized, I'm assuming, what you know consumers wanted. Everyone was going with the GoPro and because of the actual gimbal you can get. Um, and they they fixed it. You know, They did this whole three-axis gimbal, which oh, is Oh, but they're incredible. not offering to buy back the other ones? Uh, no, I, I don't know. Damn I don't. it. I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> no, no, no. That. I'm just saying that, I mean, it wasn't broken, but I'm just saying this is much better as far as like oh, professional yeah. video oh, well, goes. It's so steady. The, the sample videos are crazy. The one that I have is the, that's the first one that they came out with, with their own camera. Mm -hmm. Then they realized we don't need this big egg thing on the back. We just need the camera. Yeah. All we need is just the lens and the thing. We can stabilize that and everything else would be much better. So they, they just removed the camera from that big housing thing and just redesigned it to make it function better. That's why it's second generation. It's ready to go. Yeah. It's going to continue to get better and better and better. Uh, now, they also integrated their or they're going to be integrating a GPS system into the Phantom 2 Plus as well, allowing users to create automated flight paths and or keep it hovering in the same position, even if it has to cope with winds of up to 25 miles an hour uh, while it does it. Now, also DJI released... Well, that was in there already. Was it? Yeah. Oh, well, never mind then. Also, DJI released a firmware update for all Phantom Copters or drones. Uh, the update will allow pilots of the devices to avoid flying in restricted airspace, uh, be it user-generated or federally mandated, which is great because I know that's something we kind of worried about. Well, I love how they say, well, make sure you don't fly. It's going to lock it up so you can't fly it in certain places. That's what I mean, yeah. So what I didn't talk about was uh, terrorism before. And I was, I, got, I was flying on the plane when I was going to Chicago. I'm sitting there thinking about drones, and I'm like, whoa, you can just... You mean just fly one You can up. just take this to the, you know, I, I wouldn't do this, and I obviously don't want anybody doing it, but I'm sure if I thought about it, somebody else has thought about it, using the things for evil, right? I mean, there's nothing... How's it going to... I mean, this may stop you from flying it at an airport because it's within that no-fly zone, but geez, if somebody just built a quadricopter out of parts, they could strap some plastic explosives to it and just fly it into something. Yeah. I mean, that's bad to say. It is. But I'm sure somebody thought about it, but that's just one of the things you have to watch out for today. Yeah, I mean, God forbid that happen. But I, it's it, bad. Yeah. But anyway, what's up, Sutter? You know how uh, you said it locks up in restricted airspace? Yes. What if you turn the GPS off? Uh, Couldn't that's a good you question. just fly it anywhere? Because it's not going to know where it is. I'm assuming. Um, does, can you turn the GPS I off? I think it's in one of those switches up top. You can turn the GPS off, which doesn't make it as stable, but you could still fly. But maybe the firmware automatically will we'll know, lock it no matter what. Yeah. Because the, the GPS, you can turn... I don't know. I don't. I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see. I'm sure we'll get one of these eventually to review and, and test out and yeah, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and finally, actually, we have two more stories, but this is the uh, the last one as far as gear goes. Uh, Atomos. We talked about this. They announced a few new products at NAB, including the Shogun, a new 4K seven inch recorder. Uh, it's the world's first 12G SDI and 4K HDMI monitor recorder. And debt what? When are they going to come out with the Hayuken? <laughs> I don't know. But um, Hayuken! It features a 1080p Super, Hayuken! Super Atom IPS 7-inch touchscreen, which is, I'm assuming, very similar to that blade that we checked out, the yeah, IPS but, screen. But 7 inches? 7 inch, though. At 4K resolution, it's be awesome. man. Yeah. And it even supports the newly announced 7A7, Sony A7S, which we just talked about. Uh, they got announced at the same time at NAB, so you can do the 4K output directly right away. Um, it'll be available for shipping at the end of quarter three in 2014 for under $2,000. Which means it's probably like nineteen ninety nine. I was going to say, they didn't announce the specific price, but yeah, it's probably going to be that. I mean, this thing is thinner. It, it's, it looks like it's going to be awesome with, mm -hmm. the, with the monitor and doing the 4K. I mean, everybody's pushing to 4K now. Yeah, it's and crazy. And they're, they're just getting there quick. I'm waiting for YouTube to start supporting it. Well, as you know... Some of the videos that I recorded with the iMac, it's a 27-inch iMac, which gives the screen resolution. It's like 1440. It's 1440, so it's 20-something by 1440. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you upload, I uploaded it that. I might as well. Why not? Yeah. And you have that option with some of the videos where I, um, w when we do that Maria video, the, the five-minute portrait, video, yeah. when I do the editing of it, that's all full native 1440. Nice. Not the shooting of the video, because you're shooting at 1080 with your camera, but when I'm editing... 
I'm putting that up at 1440 so people can watch it at the highest res. It's almost like looking at my screen regularly. I was going to say, if you have an iMac that's 27 inches, it's going to be the same thing it's as be, being in front of your monitor. Exactly. Pretty much. I mean, yep. I'm sure there's some compression, obviously. Uh, now, they also announced the Atomos Ninja Star, which is really cool looking. This thing is the lightest and smallest recorder to date, so small that it'll actually fit on a DJI quadcopter. Um, it looks to be a little bigger than a GoPro 2. It's uh, 3.5 inches wide, 2.3 inches tall, and it's like not even an inch thick. Right, and it doesn't have a screen on it. doesn't have a screen. But it has... Which is kind of what we talked about before. We did. Go ahead, keep going, because there's some um, really cool stuff about this. Some more stuff. Uh, this will cost about $295, and it takes CFast cards, and will start shipping in late May. Yeah, I'm still waiting to see if if it just takes CFast, if or if that means that I can put a compact flash in there. Like backward compatible kind right. of thing. I don't know. Like, yeah, I have no I've idea. I've never seen a CFast card in the ever in person, and I Googled it to see images, and from what I saw, it looks like the XQD card front. Like what an XD, XQD mm -hmm. card looks like, but then it, just in the size of a compact exactly, flash. Exactly, yeah. So SanDisk is behind that, of course, mm -hmm. and I think that will take off more than the XQD. But this th small unit, with the, 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 you have the buttons on the front so you can see exactly what lights up with what you want, is amazing. The fact that you can take a Nikon D3300, the fact that you're going to be able to do clean out at the highest resolution, saving it at the high resolution on this, this new Atomos is going to open up a world for, in a world, <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Right. Um, it's going to open up a world for amateurs to get into the recording game for over 20 minutes or 30 minutes. When you have a D3300 or you have a D610 and you want to have something that's an Atomos that it doesn't have the screen, but it has the ability for 295 bucks plus the card, because I don't know how much those are right now, to, to, to have the quality of what the Atomos gives you, to get the, the clean out signal right from your camera. That's great. Just to make a box like that. When I saw 295, oh, where was I? I was, I was. I had to read it twice because I was like, that's pretty inexpensive. I, was, I can't believe it's only 295. I think I was at a bar. I was somewhere. Or maybe I was at the, uh, in Chicago and the, I saw the press release and I sat there and I went, oh my God. <laughs> I, I audibly went, oh my God, 295. I was like, holy Jesus, that's amazing. Yeah, I think it's great. And the other thing is, um, I, I think the CFast cards, the price is around 200 I think that's still fairly expensive because... And I don't know the size. For a card, yeah. It I is. don't know the size either, but because I, I guess they're, they're so limited right now. And, yeah. And their I hope that it, you can put a uh, compact flash in it right now. I don't know. I, I bet it's only CFast just because with the 4K, speed? I bet they need it to be transferring well, Does this one do 4K? Fast. This is 4K, yeah. The little one, too? I Oh, you know what? I'm not sure. I Actually, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I think the little one may I was just talking about the, the big, yeah. Yeah, you're talking about the big one. Does the big one take CFast or takes the hard drive still? The big one, I believe, still takes the hard drive. Yeah. So two and a half inch hard That's drives. cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I, I can't, they're gonna, I'm they're going to. sure they'll send it to us. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll try it out and have gear, gear of the week and stuff like that. But I am excited about that 295 one. Yeah, that's Because great. that opens it up to everybody. Everyone. Everybody. Yeah. That's a win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, you also wanted to talk about some hockey game images that you had showed me. Well, Bruce Bennett. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know anything about it, so you can kind of take over with All this, right, so this news story. I saw some uh, a pro reader sent this to me because I didn't see it. He's like, hey, did you see this story about Bruce Bennett? Mm -hmm. For anybody that doesn't know, Bruce Bennett, has he shot he just shot his 5,000th hockey game. Wow. Now, he, shot, he, used to, he had a studio in Long Island. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew... I met him a few times back when I used to shoot the Flyers in the 90s. He had a whole studio of photographers. He basically started in the 70s shooting, I believe, at the Rangers game. So I'm thinking back to when I was in high school, 10th grade. There was a magazine in different photo magazines, not like this was just a photo, a very small thing. And it had him on the cover, Bruce Bennett, guy with gray hair and a mustache, holding Canon white lenses. And that's why I aspired to have those lenses, right? The Canon ones, which the I white ones, never yeah. owned. But I saw the white ones. I'm like, I want to be like this guy. He shoots hockey. That's what he's been doing since the 70s, right? So he used to sit up in the stands and shoot, and then somehow he ended up getting contracts for the NHL. And he used to cover the official photographer for the Flyers, for the Devils, for the Rangers, and for the Islanders. Wow. So... But that's all within this range. They yeah. would drive down and shoot the Flyers games, and they'd have other photographers shooting the Devils. They'd have somebody else shooting at the island. Um, and by the way, at the Devils games, they could shoot between the benches 
where there was no glass. So you used to see these people wearing Scary. helmets, photographers yeah. in there. That would be the most exciting thing ever to sit and watch a game from the ice in between the benches. It's like a good dream job, dude. I, you know, the closest I got to it was shooting the uh, lacrosse game la- uh, three weeks ago. Yeah. They had no glass there, and I was between the benches. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. But so Bruce Bennett has shot his 5,000th hockey game. He has been there for so many great images. He shot all the Stanley Cups. He sold his wow. studios years ago, maybe 10 years ago to Getty. I believe he sold it for $14 million. But he sold the archive. It's probably, maybe it's worth more now. But Getty Images bought the archive and bought the studios, so he sold out and did that, and I guess now he works. He's the NHL photographer for Getty, so he can go wherever he wants, whether it's in uh, Sochi for the Olympics. I, I want to try to get him on. I want to try to go to New York because uh, maybe go up to Getty's offices and, and interview him there. So I'm going to try doing that, going to get in touch with him. I know some people that shot with him. I'm going to try to make it happen. But wow. that, that's something that set me on my path for shooting hockey was seeing him in that thing, in that magazine, and then meeting him at the hockey games and, and just seeing what he did. I'm not, I won't comment on the quality of the work, though. <laughs> that dude's got it made, though. I mean, that's awesome. Well, he, now he's got the freedom to kind of do whatever he wants because when you're selling, when you sold for that much, $14 million, Yeah, $14 million. That's, that's a pretty nice chunk of change right there. Yeah, and, I, and rumor has it is that he didn't take care of the rest of the photographers Oh, that were in the studio. They mm-hmm. just got fired, basically. Rumor has it. Allegedly. Yeah. Rumor has it. I was waiting for that. Adele? No? You no. don't know it? I'm not going to do Adele. <laughs> And but that's it for photo news this week. That's it for photo news. That's it. It was All a right. long one. Yeah, a lot of, it. A lot I had of another thing to talk stories. about. I had another thing to talk about. Gotcha. Um, Trey Ratcliffe. Mm-hmm. I saw something that he did. Anybody that doesn't know Trey Ratcliffe, he's he got he has a site called Stuck in Customs, and he is known as like the HDR guru, the guy that teaches HDR. He's moved to New Zealand where the trees walk, with Hobbit Town. He moved <laughs> the out trees there. Walk. Right. He moved out there. Um, he moved his family there. And he, every single day, uploads a full-resolution image, full res, no watermark, 24 megapixels or more, depending on what camera he was using. Printable, printable, downloadable, to do whatever you want with it other than sell it, non-commercial use. Mm -hmm. And he he put out a tweet, and he goes, I just uploaded 500 of my portfolio images to Google+, full res, for you to look at. I went on, downloaded one of the images. It was 24 megabytes. I could print that at Adorama Pix to get a luminized print, PX Jared 25, 25% off till the end of April. But you could <laughs> you could go download his images and make prints of them. He also sells prints, but they that he signs. I tweeted him back. I'm like, I'm like, this is interesting. It makes me think. Like, is this the way that it's going? Should I be putting out all of my photos of these musicians like this? Should I put them out full res? No what which I do something like that Bieber one I put out full res no watermark the uh, the other the other singer the redheaded singer remember Paramore I printed out no no no, no uh, guy guy redheaded guy at WXPN no 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 he's no 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 that was the red you're thinking of Brett Denon which yeah. I love but I didn't shoot him we just stood at the back and watched but Teddy 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 I got nothing he uh, I can't he, think of he has a song with Christina Perry now but. Is it a, if it's a pop? No, he's a, he's a guitar player. You, we shot him at uh, at Q102 thing, Jingle Ball, two I years did? ago. I don't remember. Anyway, forget his name. Forget <laughs> Teddy, his name. Teddy something. But he uh, he has some. What was I talking about? <laughs> Full res, free images. Oh yeah. yeah. So I tweeted him, and I was like, I got to stop saying like. I got to stop saying that. See this? I'm self correcting myself. I said to him, "You are really making me think." Because this is interesting that you're putting out 500 of your best images for all the world to do whatever they want with for commercial use. Yeah, it's kind of scary at the same time. Is it scary or is this what it's... Genius. Non-commercial use. Or is this smart? The image is doing it. Maybe he doesn't need to make his money from this. He makes it from something else. Maybe photography is just the conduit, the outlet to start, to kick you off to be seen so that you can teach, so that you can sell products. He has an iPad product. He, he has his HDR products. He has books. He has his Arcanium thing, which is some kind of education thing with the Google Glass. He works very closely with Google Glass. I looked. He has 8 million. Caught myself. Didn't say it. Like. He has 8 million people in his circles but we also know that google plus that eight million doesn't really mean that much yeah i, I do love google plus's um photo viewer i think it's, it is gorgeous yeah it's very nice so he said yes he'll come on we're not going to new nice. zealand sorry uh, we'll set it up around the table with a computer 
maybe I'll bring the iMac out or something and do it on that. We'll, we'll figure out how to make it look good. Because he's far away. But I think that's an important interview to get because I really want to pick his brain about this. I really want to know his thinking, his thought process behind letting these images go full res and still being able to sell them. Does it hurt him selling them himself? Which becomes signed. Of course, the other ones aren't signed. But it's, it's a new world. It yeah, has changed. It is. The photography world has, this the way it's going, has yeah. ever evolved and continued to change. I actually learned a lot of my HDR techniques from him, or I, I got into HDR from, uh, cool. from checking him out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Were you listening at all? Well, yeah. You, you <laughs> learned a lot of HDR things from yeah, him. Yeah. No, I, I almost forgot gear of the week and I didn't, oh, I've got other stuff to read. I just want to see how much time we're in. Gotcha. Because I didn't do flying solo this week because I knew we had a lot of stuff to talk about and we don't want to go two hours. Yeah. Sorry, people out there who want to go two hours. I, well, we, we did. Thanks, Sutter. You're welcome, Jared. <laughs> oh, God. He's 19 now. He's almost done his He's teens. a big boy. He's a big boy. That's why he's he's Billy his, Boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, last week I mentioned myroadreel.com Wait, how do you spell that? <laughs> That's M-Y-R-O-D-E-R-E-E-L.com Still up there, go check it out That's all I'm saying about them I was watching, what? I did want to say they actually have some really cool like Tutorials? Video. Yeah, videos? tutorial and tips They're, they're short and to the point But it's That's really concise Yeah, it's very concise but it, it's it's something cool to check out. I actually watched like all fifteen of them. It oh, they brings have you. It's not fifteen, but there's there's like ten or fifteen. I, don't I know, saw they just put up an audio one. It's like every week, and they bring you from like doing a casting call all the way to post production, which even is including cool. sound and stuff like that. Is yeah. it Ryan Connolly on that? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't uh, even know who Ryan Connolly is. But anyway, Film Riot. I He's got, like what you do, but film side all right don't know go to myroadreel.com even if you just want to get education on shooting video they have some of those free videos mm -hmm. up there yeah uh, so i was watching shark tank you love that which That's i love show. shark tank and i love mark cuban on there if anybody has a connection with cuban please let me know He'd i would go and have on i would love to have mark cuban on the show i will go i will fly out to to dallas i will go wherever i need to go to talk to mark cuban for an hour i would love to talk to him but they ran a commercial Heinz 57, right? You know Heinz. Yep. Glass bottle. Mm -hmm. And it was false advertising, in my opinion, because it was teaching people how to, how to, it was showing them how to get ketchup out of the bottle, which I know how to get Heinz ketchup out of the bottle, but they did it wrong. They were showing the bottle, holding it straight up, and they're like, thump the bottom, <laughs> which right, doesn't, to, that's not how you do it. What? You hit the 57, right? Right. So the proper way is on this angle, for anybody that's watching at home. You have this angle. There's a 57 printed right in the glass bottle. It's not a squeeze one. And you use the palm of your hand right there. And you boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and that frees up the ketchup, which comes out of the bottle at 1.2 miles an hour or something. It was a Jeopardy question. Final really? Jeopardy the other day. I thought you were just making that up. No, it was a Final Jeopardy. which goes, this has been clocked at coming out of the bottle at 1.2 miles an hour. I'm like, what is Heinz ketchup? I'm like, Heinz that ketchup. has to be Heinz ketchup, Alex. <laughs> so you are correct, Jared Poland. So then they just you just thump like that. So I thought the commercial I wanted to bring it up because it was bad advertising. Wait, so that had you had you didn't bring up Shark Tank so at Mark all? Mark Cuban. What was the point of bringing <laughs> up Shark Tank? Because it was a commercial for Shark Tank. It was on Shark Tank. It was a commercial it was during, during Shark Tank. <laughs> it was during Shark Tank. So it had nothing to do with Shark Tank. So speaking of Shark Tank, <laughs> if you want to watch something that's great for business, you want to learn something and be entertained at the same time, I recommend Shark Tank, and I've talked about that before. You actually got me into it. I, I do enjoy that show a lot. Let's talk about Gear of the Week. Yes. Then I've got an email to read from a reader, and then we've got Wheel of Fro. Very nice. So Gear of the Week, we already talked that we have the D610s, which hopefully don't suck. For doing what we're doing yeah we this is the first time we're using, using this them white balance and and th this certain picture style and all that stuff so hopefully this video looks good i hope it looks good yes yeah. we, we have it down we've had it down pretty well we did yeah um but we have the reason to move the three of the same cameras one is we're not using your camera which means we're not putting wear and tear on your body yeah we're not using my D4S. Mm -hmm. We're not putting wear and tear on that. We're putting wear and tear on their cameras yeah. <laughs> that they allow us to use. But yep. that's what the point is. And to have these, if I needed to buy these to put on a show, I would have bought them. You know, mm -hmm. I have no problem doing that. But if I can ask for them and, and they get the placement in it, then there's nothing wrong with that. If these do the job, these are going to be great to carry around with us. They will put the put them in a Pelican case, stack them up. I may get some different lenses. Maybe I'll pick. Maybe I'll find a company to get some uh, cine lenses. Some cine lenses again. 
because unfortunately we don't use the uh, the Rokinon stop sending us the stuff. Yeah, they were nice. They were nice to use. Mm -hmm. I'll say it. They, they were, were great. So sharp. Yeah, they're great for video, not great mm -hmm. for stills because of the focus thing. Yeah. But they were cool to use. So maybe we'll just pick up Cinnamon Lens. I'll buy them. Pick up some kind of Cinnamon Lens. <laughs> Do you know how much Cinnamon Lenses are? Now the Rokinons aren't too bad. The Rokinons, oh, the Rokinons aren't. Rokinons. They're not autofocus or anything. And what are any Cinnamon Lenses autofocus? Are they all manual? I, be I believe they're mostly or manual. most of them at least. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one piece of product right there. The other product is now that we're organizing my office, I went on to Amazon to try to find a product to make labels. So I bought the brother P, P, -touch. P touch. I think it's $23. Wow. Literally. That's not bad. $23. Not it takes bad six double A batteries. It has a cartridge in there. You can buy extra cartridges. This one prints out white. Uh, it's a white thing with black printing. You can change the fonts. You have a QWERTY keyboard right here. You can print out name tags, which I did for my uh, stands and stuff. Like it says, Frono's photo. And then underneath it has my phone number and you print it out. The cartridges are about 10 bucks each. I bought two for 20 uh, from them. And I bought the white with the black. You can get black with white. Pretty you can much get, any color, You right? can get, well, green that prints with white, or you could do black that prints with yellow or, or gold. So it's pretty cool. There's a lot of different options. But for $24, I'm, what, the reason I got this is I have so many different chargers in my office. A million. Oh, right. From, and we just got three more from here, yeah. and I charged up the batteries. So I want to know that this is D600. So I print, uh, sorry, D610. I put that on there because it's the same charger for the 800, the 600s, and the 7000s, mm -hmm. and the 7 and the 7100. Yeah. Same, same charger, same battery. But I also want to know that this is to the 610 or that if I tell somebody like, hey, go put this on the 610 charger or grab that and pack it up or put it on the D4S, you know, I have that. So it's just more for just... Being able to have be organized like that. Just be able to see it cleanly and clearly so that I know that this goes to that. And we started organizing your back area, the storage area that you guys never see. Um, and we started putting like raw talk in a certain section and shelves and stuff like that. So we can use that as well for, you know, organizing that too, the shelving. Just oh, yeah. put like, you know, this is where the mics go. This is where the XLR cables go, et cetera. That right. Kind of stuff. And that helps. So yeah. anyway, this is just what I ordered so that I could stay organized and I read the reviews. I also look when I'm looking to buy something, I look at the release date. This was released in 2012. The model before it was in 2008. So I do that too. I want to know that I got the newest one I and there's the a reason because I saw it on sale on Rakuten, but not this one, the older one. And it was mm -hmm. like $19 on sale. This is $24. Yeah, you might as right? well spend an extra five bucks for to the, get new the one, newest model, the new technology. And I'm and I just read the instructions, I, I played with it, figured out how to make it work. And boom. What, it's, you said it's Brother brand? Yeah, this is Brother. And they that's make like a the lot biggest, of one of the biggest printing. They do a bunch of different labels and stuff. I also have their printer bag. I have that printer uh, scanner and uh, fax, copier sure. over there. It's not mm -hmm. a fax. Yeah. And I love that thing because the, for my dad, right? My dad still has a fax machine. I still need to get him on, pod, on the podcast here, but he has a fax machine. Every, Does nobody he actually uses it. Yeah, he uses it because some I people miss still. Faxing. So, some people still use it, but I'm trying to explain to him that if you have, say, 14 pieces of paper that you want to scan, you put it in the in the feeder on it, you scan it right to a PDF. There's a software that easily on the Brother printer just scans it right to a PDF, makes it easy. You email that out, you're good to go. That's great. Love it. That's why I love it. And that, that printer is like $130 on sale at Newegg or something. Yeah. I need to get the wireless one so it connects to all the computers so you guys can use my second computer. But that's just, that's just what it is. I, I, I like this product. Very that's nice. That's what I talk about. So I got one more thing. To read, and then we're going to do Wheel of Fro, and we'll Rappy McRapperson it up. Um, I got a message from somebody. I put out that Truth About Photography video again, another one, this time about harsh critiques and mm -hmm. being harsh, because one of the kids from Antonelli asked me to critique his stuff. Friends of Sam Green. Cool. You know Mark, right? McElvain? Yeah. Is, is, is it McElvain? It's McElvain. Yeah, yeah, McElvain. Same thing. <laughs> With MC in it. Yeah. Like Mick. Is it McElvain? Yeah, McElvain. It's McElvain. That's what I said. That's, that's what I said. <laughs> sure. Anyway, so he... he Started a Squarespace site, and uh -huh. I asked him, what I've been doing now is when I'm going to do some people's uh, critiques, I ask them what template they're using, how much time have they spent on it, have they had any issues, have they done certain tweaks. He told me that he spent about an hour and a half to two hours putting it together. Wow. That's it. Yeah. Which, there's some issues that I came up with, but that he could easily change. And I sat there, and I was like, after two hours, how... E anyway, I'm just going to read what this person said. This is somebody else. I did Mark's review... 
Check it out because I love his studio work. His studio work is awesome. I went through each one of his portfolios, so it was a rapid fire critique and a Squarespace rapid fire critique all in one. Ooh. And I was like, this image has to go. And I explained why. His product shots were so strong. His, his lighting is tremendous. Does it so very well. So I love that part of it. And you can hear the enthusiasm. It ended up being a 27 minute review. Wow. I didn't know it was 27 minutes until I looked at the clock when I was done and it said 27 minutes. I was like, holy God. So I made a 20 second intro and I was like, this is going to be a 27 minute long video. <laughs> now a little longer because I'm doing this, but stick with it. It's really good. So this is a comment on that video, this is or a, this is from him. This is some. This isn't from him. This is somebody sent me an email regarding Squarespace. Okay, I gotcha. And I talk about it because you know I talk about. It. But it mm -hmm. says, it says, "Hello, Fro. I just wanted to make, uh, wanted to take a moment and thank you for all the free content you provide. I usually commute into New York City to shoot, so I'm always very happy when a new podcast is up for me to listen to during my drive. I also wanted to write you and tell you about my experience on finally trying Squarespace. I had." I've heard it plugged on just about every podcast I listen to, so I thought since they offered a free trial, I would give it a shot. I have uh, tried just about every site from Wix, Smug Mug to Photo Shelter. Well, about 30 minutes into building the site, I was already putting in your fro discount code and signing up for a full year. In the same night, I had everything up and running, including online commerce. The templates look great, and the ease of customization was incredible. I can't recommend Squarespace enough, and, th uh, and thanks, to you, uh, thanks to your honesty... Or thanks to you honestly take it, talking about it and not selling it to me, I tried it. I hope you get a chance to take a look at my site and let me know what you think. And it's TravisWKeys.com is his site. Anyway, I want to, and he says, thanks. I wanted to read that because that's the point for anybody out there is, in, yeah. in, in marketing or selling. When a product, anything, is good, you don't have to sell it to people. All you have to do is get, make them aware of it so that they try it because it will sell itself. That is... How's your back, by the way? It's good. All right. We'll the lumbar ahead. support is very nice. So that's... I'm glad he recognized that. And I hope all of you guys out there recognize when I talk about something like Squarespace, I can tell you about it or I could just have you try the 14-day free trial and you can see for yourself if it works for you. That, to me, is, a, is, a, is one, good selling and two, or good marketing or good advertising, and two, a good product. Yeah. So if you want to try a 14-day free trial, go to squarespace.com slash fro. Use code fro... Well, what are we on? Raw talk? <laughs> fro, what's it? Raw talk? Either way. Use code fro, by the way. You can use fro, fro tube, or raw talk, and that's going to give you 10% off your first order. That means if you sign up for a year, you're going to get 10% off your first year, which means it's going to be about 86 bucks for the basic one, much cheaper than if you wanted to go get your own hosting, which it's not cheaper, but six bucks, five, six bucks a month for hosting. And then you have to configure your FTP server. You have to figure out how you're going to build a site. You have to know HTML. It's not turnkey. This is turnkey. Just check it out and use it. Sutter, let's get on the Wheel of Fro, cool. please. And I think I'm jumping over to Squarespace too Ooh. soon. Well, good for you, Steven. Yeah. <laughs> or a photofolio if I want to invest. Very nice. We'll talk. Well, so Adam uses a photofolio, Adam Lerner. A photofolio for anybody out there makes a clean, very clean, very nice website. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of readers out there, you don't want to drop a thousand. Is it thousand bucks now, or is it twelve fifty? Yeah, it's two fifty a month for four months. All right, it's a thousand dollars up front that they ask you to give. You buy into this program. Now they host it. They do everything. A photofolio is a solid professional site, very easy to use, just like Squarespace. The difference is you're dropping a thousand bucks or two fifty a month for four months. Plus, what's it? Nineteen or eighteen bucks a 17. month? Seventeen. Seventeen dollars a month for the storage and everything else like that. So there's other options out there. If you're looking for eighty-six dollars a year versus a thousand dollars up front plus eighteen dollars a month. Whatever. They do a good product, too. I did look at them and thought about them for, for promoting, but I just thought that that 1000 bucks off the bat wasn't good enough. What, Sutter? Oh, God, I thought you were telling us like the D610 wasn't, wasn't recording well. You were scaring the crap out of me because he's over there. So what Sutter does over there is he directs it. That looks about right <laughs> so that we don't have glare on the screen. And by the way, I need to order socks for my... Uh, remind me to order socks for the... Why are you Diffusion smiling at me? socks for the Kino I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Socks, socks for, for the, uh, the pointing at lights. Oh, I'm, I'm doing a sutter. Socks. I'm doing like... a sutter. Hold on. I'm pointing. You don't know I'm pointing at the, at the Kino flows? <laughs> I thought you meant actual you mean socks. you you're doing a sutter? How often do I do that? Well, because he went like this earlier oh. in the show, and you didn't know that this meant give me a pen. Well, there's not a pen in your hand. He's going like this. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I don't know. 
I'll make sure you get some socks. All right, so it's time for Wheel of Fro. <laughs> I picked this person off the email list, which we haven't done too much with, and not a lot of people have signed up lately because I haven't been pushing it. Uh, I don't even know the web addresses. What is it? Fronosphoto.com slash hyphens. DSLR hyphen video hyphen guide. You can sign up to be notified about information and the behind the scenes footage that I will start to be putting out. That's where I'm picking pe- uh, about the video guide. So I picked this guy. His name is Eric Sharpshooter. I'm sure that's not his official name, but <laughs> Eric Sharpshooter <laughs> will be spinning the Wheel of Fro. And if you have any recommendations for products you think I should add to the Wheel of Fro, please let me know. I'd like to reach out to different companies and see if they want to put something on the wheel. Um, did I put a Black Rapid up there? You do crossed a, out Nikon. one of the Adorama picks and wrote Black Rapid on it. Uh, which one is it? <laughs> Top l- uh, oh, left Oh, there red. it is. <laughs> that's the one. I forgot to mention that last week. Because I didn't realize I have, to, I have to replace it. That's a black rapid. So on the wheel, we've got two Fronos photo guides. you got the Fronos photo beginner guide and the flash guide. We have a question, a question mark, which we did land on once. Mm-hmm. Um, and the guy ended up taking my video guides, which nice. is very nice. We have road microphones, think tank photo for bags, Adorama picks, use code... Well, you're going to get free stuff. I might as well say the code again. PXJared25 to get 25% off till the end of April on Illuminized Prints. And no, if you put in PXJared75, you don't get 75% off. Somebody tried it. <laughs> Ding it. <laughs> they can see like if, if someone tried it? Well, no. Somebody told me they tried it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have Squarespace we just talked about. Uh, Flash Guide. This one's Black Rapid. Beginner Guide. Think Tank Road. Add around. Pay- borrow Lenses for $200 or $250. One of the two. One of the two. I don't remember. So... I'm going to spin the wheel right now for Wheel of Fro for Eric Sharpshooter. Are we ready? We are ready. Wheel of Fro! There we go. Spins around and round and goes and where it stops, nobody knows. The Wheel of Fro is going to stop on the question mark. Nope, right past the question mark. And it's stopping on... Black Rapid. Black Rapid, because it didn't click over. So now I got to tell Black Rapid, because they didn't know they're on the wheel, that they are giving <laughs> a strap to Sharpshooter over here. Uh, Sutter, you want to remove this from the table, please? Sure. So there you go. There is only one of those on the wheel, and it stopped on the Black Rapid. Speaking of Black Rapid, at store.fronosphoto.com, you can get the Fronos Photo I Shoot Raw strap for $79. Uh, with shipping, including shipping, and 89 in, in overseas. Very nice. So, how does your back feel? It feels pretty wonderful. Usually, usually, for those that, you can't see this part, but usually at the end of the podcast, I get up and I'm just like, first thing I say is like, oh, my back is killing me. <laughs> I'm just it's like, like bitching every time. Yeah, I'm usually when just like, oh. get, And then every and I week, say every time. Every week I say, when you gonna, I say, I'll get you a new chair one day. <laughs> It's just so much more comfortable, like having something like this, where as before I'm like hunched over and like trying to like. I'll get probably to the use table it for dinner and, now too. Yeah, you'll be sliding around. Like, well, is it sliding <laughs> too much? Uh, well, that's the only thing. We're, br- we're definitely going to get some uh, just gaff tape right around the wheels. We're not going to get gaff tape around the wheels. Well, something to we're lock gonna it. We're going to put blocks there, like they do for airplanes. <laughs> you know, airplane blocks. Yeah, we'll come up with something so that it doesn't move. Because I thought about that too. Yeah, we could put down rubber on the floor. We could put down. I could get carpet squares or that. Yeah, I could just get a carpet square. Yeah, because yeah. these wooden floors are just a little too... And they're uh, not even because yeah. they're a hundred and some years old. Refinished hardwood floors. Uh, so yeah, that's cool, man. This was this was good. This was fun. This was a different type of raw talk that we did because we didn't do the flying solo, but we had so much information to talk about. So much this week. So uh, I want to thank Rode Microphone. want to thank Atomos. want to thank uh, Allenscamera.com. Thank Nikon for sending us these cameras, which I do not get yeah. to keep. They will be going back at some point, depending on how long <laughs> I decide to keep them. Um, Five years later. But hopefully they worked well. Hopefully everything worked the way we want. Battery still working, Sutter? Yeah, since the last time I uh, checked them. All right. GoPro's still going, so yeah. that's a good thing. The so that's cool. On. I mean, the nice thing is, too, um, I've been color grading more because I you had got me a new uh, video card a couple weeks ago, and it's just so powerful, this but, thing. Yeah, it's a lot of, there's a lot of work. So I can actually, I can do color grading now for an hour and a half to two hour podcast and my computer not crash in between because it's going through 300,000 frames. How much was that card? The card was like 700 bucks yeah. alone. It was um the... Uh, NVIDIA GE Force uh, GTX Ti? I forget. 780 Ti. Right. GTX 780 Ti. This thing is a beast. It's like the best video card in the market right now. So here's my thing when it comes so to powerful. buying. If, if, if Eckert tells me he needs something... It's usually here in a couple days. Yeah, you usually order it and like it's two days later it's here. Yeah, I don't have a problem spending money 
on quality products that's one going to make his job easier and make everything look better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, the video card may not make things. Well, actually, it did make it look better because now you can color grade certain things. Yeah. So before my computer would crash because there was so much. I'm, you know, I'm editing almost 200 gigs of footage. Yeah. I mean, I've never had a problem spending money for quality product because I know in the long run it's going to pay off. Yeah. And I also got a, an upgraded uh, USB 3.0 PCI slot, which now supports up to seven USB 3. Uh, things so basically yeah, i have things. all these drives <laughs> uh, seven usb th three drives or inputs i have all these drives now which is great nice I have the um sorry the drobo and everything oh yeah i gave, gave you a drobo mm -hmm. which i didn't buy that was one of the things they gave me back in the day and it's been sitting on your shelf yeah like the other three <laughs> drobos sitting on my shelf that haven't been used yeah. yet the dro two I'm drobo sure we'll minis. get to them soon since raw talk is you know a lot of footage and a lot of gigs every week yeah and i still need to organize my stuff we're getting there i could use my p labeler there you go anyway sutter Happy birthday last week. Yes. Punk. Happy birthday, dude. Thank you. What are you going to do with your gift? W which one? <laughs> the camera. <I'm laughs> gonna, which one? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm going to take pictures with it. <laughs> oh, no. See, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, do they work? To, are you going to use them at the same time? Oh, God. <laughs> because you weren't around. I'm not this information this time. <laughs> you weren't around in the, in like the set. So there's, oh, Sutter helped me put up on my shelf, and I posted this picture of all of my cameras. Yes. I've got, what, 25 maybe Polaroids up there? Got a whole bunch. And I've got a whole Kodak shelf. I found two more Kodak things. I found the instant camera, which I'll show you, that okay. Kodak made and got sued for. And it had sued film by. in it still, didn't it? It, it, has, a ca it has the cartridge in it. I actually, uh, I found one at an antique store by me. I didn't buy it, but I saw it. How much it. was it? I don't know. Like... 20, 30 bucks probably. Dude, offer them five bucks. I'd <laughs> be like, dude, 20, 30. I'd be like, that's a little steep. That's full retail. Full pull up, pull, retail. Full, that's full retail. That's a little steep. I, I'm I'm thinking more like uh, eight. Yeah, full retail in like 1970. Uh, they'll, 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 be like, they'll be like eight. And I'm going to be like, if they're at 30 and I'm like, eh, you know, I'm around 10. I'll be like, you know, I could do 30. I'll be like, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm tapped out at 14. And they're like, all right, you want to split the difference at 18? I'm like, all right. <laughs> I just watched uh, American Pickers. I was going to say that or uh, Pawn Punch, Shop. Pawn, Pawn Stars. Or no, Pawn Pawn Stars I, yeah. You know, Pawn Stars, there's something that they do that always pisses me off. It's the Let same thing. Let me call thing. the expert. No, 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 no. That's fine. I like when they funny. bring in the expert. But you know, it's like when people sell something, they just got told it was worth $5,000. He's like, so yeah, the best I can do is twelve fifty. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and they're like, oh, but he just said it's $5,000. They're like, well, that's full retail. I don't know how long it's going to sit here. It's going to be on my shelf. I'm blah, taking blah. the risk. I got to reframe it. I'm like, oh, good for you. <laughs> good for you. La-dee-da. Good for you. You know? So the one thing I hate is when they go to Rick and they go to the, the, the B-roll, the cut, and they, they ask him, he's like, I really like this item. I just have to get it at the right price. <laughs> the part I hate is, is when they always, I mean, I think we talked about this before, but when they bring him back and they're like filming the behind the scenes look and it's like him talking about the historical aspect of it. Like yeah. he never like, researched it. Clearly, like he knew everything he's like doing the Wikipedia page right before they talk about it on the air. They know. They already pulled it. All the yeah. producers pull that stuff. It's like, there's well, we, no way one person knows like that much crazy information. Oh, it's funny. I was getting my car. I was getting my inspection done on my car mm -hmm. and I, and I overheard they were watching, uh, What's the what's that garage war with garage storage wars storage wars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the New York. It was the L.A. one, I think. They have, of a, they have different kinds, like different oh, there's LA Texas. And cities and oh, there's different. Yeah. Wow. So this one is the main one. But I overhear, oh, that's that's ten dollars. Oh, that's another twenty five. Oh, that's worth a hundred. <laughs> and you know my feeling. It's like, come on. You just throw a number out of your you pull a number out of your ass and you go, oh, blah, 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 blah. Here's you know? a vacuum, that's four hundred dollars. Oh, that vacuum, oh that, that's another eighty. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking? Stop throwing numbers out there. Yeah, you'll make that money in like two years when you finally sell everything on eBay or something. But they get paid. I don't I I don't really watch that show. I like American pictures, but uh, pictures. American pickers. <laughs> but Mike, uh Mike, the guy Mike is getting annoying. I, I never like, watch it. He sits there and he's like, this has been sitting here in this in this garage for, for like 30 years. And I'm glad that it was me who could rescue it and give it a good home so that it, it could finally see the light of day. Because I'm going to give it a good home. I'm glad. See, that's what we do. We get back. We rescue these antiques and give them light. No, you just want to make money, asshole. <laughs> yeah. You're just in it for business. You're there like for one thing. Frank Fritz. Money. <laughs> what about Frank Fritz? That's the two guys. Right? I like Mike Frank. Wolf and Frank Fritz. I like Frank. Yeah, he's Frank's good, good but Mike is getting on my nerves. 
I never watched it. I can't it's, comment. I like American Pickers. I like what they go. Oh, and it's like, bye. And it's like, oh, and they say we're freestyling. I know we're going into overtime here, but they go, we're free. We're on a freestyle in the middle of, middle of Kansas. And we just so happened upon the largest, the largest, the largest antique dump on the side of the road. Freestyling. So they, yeah, they call it freestyle. That's so awesome. then they walk up to the door and they're like, hello. And it's like, no trespassing. Beware of dogs. We'll shoot you. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> so they get to the door and it's some crotchety old guy always. And they're like, with a big beard. And well, yeah, and he's just all like Southern overalls. and well, in Kansas or whatever. And, and, and they're like, so we're pickers. Here's a list of stuff that we look for to collect. Can we take a tour? And then they cut the commercial and the guy's like, who are you? And then they cut the commercial and then they come back. He's like, all right, sure. Come on in, you know, <laughs> and it's always something like that. Yo, you were freestyling. And then they got the girl. What's her name? Oh, tattoo girl. I forget. She's her name. a big girl, by the way. Yeah, she will rip your she would billy boy you so bad. Uh, so hard. Uh, but uh, De- Debbie, Diana, Debbie does. Dirty Dallas. Diana. No, her name is. Uh, let's get her back on the phone. Let's get her on the phone. What is her name? It definitely starts with a D. D. Oh, look it up. D- a, B, C, D, E, F, G. D- D- F- shit. I don't remember what it is. <laughs> It's the you girl. look it up. Just say the so girl. they call her back, and she's I lo- I love their product placement. So the guys don't give me a lot of time to go get lunch during my lunch break. So I like to run out and grab myself a Subway five dollar foot long that I'm gonna eat right here because I have time and it's so exciting. And it's in slow motion. It's just like oh, and this is really good. So they just spent like a minute and a half talking Danielle. about Danielle. So get Danielle on the phone. Danielle's like. Guys, I'm going to give you the coordinates to get to the next GPS location because there's a guy there who wants to buy. He's got some He's got some bikes. Mike, we know that you like bikes. And Mike's like, I like bikes. <laughs> and he's got Subway sandwiches. <laughs> right. And then and then Frank Fritz is always out there. I, li- I like Frank. He gets he's the good. oil cans. He gets the oil cans. He always does. The toys. Yeah, and he likes the toys. And Mike is all about Harleys, and, sorry, Indians and, and, and motorbikes and stuff like that. Oh, we just so happen to be freestyling in the middle of uh, wherever. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. And this week on Chair Talk, this <laughs> is Chair of the Week. Oh, yeah, Herman Miller. The, the chair is a Herman Miller. Just at least go to the website and see the stuff that they have on there. And if you can, pick up a nice chair because you sit in them. It's better off. You're better off spending <laughs> Wait, what a- what do you do in a chair? You, do you sit in them? <laughs> Turn off his mic next week. Um, <laughs> so it's just you have the ch- you have you sit in a chair for a long time. How many times have you heard that people after they retire after thirty years go? I wish I didn't have to sit in that chair, that bad, terrible chair for the last thirty years, right? I guess a lot, a <laughs> lot. Back in the day when people actually worked at the same place for thirty years because they don't anymore. Yeah, right. Um, but having a quality piece of product to sit in that saves your back and actually they actually say it helps you live longer. I don't know if they actually say that, but it just makes your posture feel better so that you're not slumped over and they give you tips on how to actually sit. It's pretty cool. Yes, chairs are very expensive, but if it's going to last you longer than my Staples chair over there that's cushy yet that's doesn't $10. have this. No, that was a that was a $200 Staples oh, chair. Oh, I thought, I, I thought you were talking about the chair that we usually sit on here. The little no, stools. those are $7. $7. <laughs> oh, but, I'm sorry. but still, I'd rather spend more money on quality products. Like I said, when you needed something... Yeah. You need something, and it was a $700 thing, so we ordered it because we know it's going to benefit the show. The, uh, that chair is going to benefit you sitting here, and the one that's coming tomorrow for me is going to benefit me long term because I should have that thing for 10, 15 years. And it is a $1,500 chair. Would I consider buying that myself? Probably. I probably would if it was that damn good. You definitely would. I think so. I know, because I like buying good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's it, guys. We're going to end it right there. <laughs> that is Raw Talk episode number 81 for this week. Next week, we'll be back with something different, I'm sure. Less chair talk. <laughs> Turn around every now and then. I get it. All right. Jared Poland. Fronosphoto.com. See ya. See ya.